what's up guys welcome to my channel today we're going to be taking on one of the biggest debates in sports and that's mj versus lebron uh, going to be taking a little different approach to this topic and going to be breaking down their first nine seasons going season by season um, they both had a little different ends to their career so i think this is a fair way to do it and see how it shapes up um, remember to smash that subscribe button have a lot of cool content coming out in the next few weeks um, some top tens and some other sports stuff so definitely smash that subscribe button and uh, let's get into it. So let's get into season one. So MJ in season one averaged 28.2 points per game, six and a half rebounds, 5.9 assists, 2.4 steals, and 0.8 blocks per game. Uh, in that season, he only became the second rookie in NBA history to average at least 20 points, five rebounds, and five assists per game. And he's also the only rookie ever to average at least 20 points, five rebounds, five assists, and two steals per game. Uh, during that season, Jordan shot 51.5% from the field and led the league in points. He won Rookie of the Year and made the All-NBA second team. In the playoffs, he only played four games but averaged 29.3 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 8.5 and assists per game while shooting 43% from the field. And now to LeBron. So in LeBron's rookie season, he averaged 20.9 points a game, 5.5 rebounds, 5.9 assists, and 1.6 steals. Um, he also had 0.7 blocks per game. Uh, he became the first rookie since Jordan to average at least 20 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists per game. But other than that, everything was just under what Jordan was averaging. He also shot 41% from the field, and he won NBA Rookie of the Year as well. He made the all-rookie first team, but he didn't make an all-NBA team. Uh, he doesn't have playoff stats because the Cavs didn't make the playoffs this year. So... Looking into it, uh, the advantage on that one in the rookie season definitely goes to MJ. So now to the second season. This one's going to be a little bit skewed because Jordan missed 64 games due to a broken foot, but in the 18 games he did play, he averaged about 23 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists per game while shooting about 46% from the field. Jordan's best moment came in the playoffs when he torched the great Boston Celtics team for 63 points, which till this day is still an NBA record for most points in a playoff game. Unfortunately, Jordan's team got swept by the Celtics in the three-game series, but in that series, he averaged about 44 points, six rebounds, and six assists while shooting about 50% from the field. So now on to LeBron's second season. He had a great second season, averaging about 27 points a game, 7 rebounds, and 7 assists. He also had about 2 steals per game and averaged 1 block per game while shooting over 47% from the field. He only became the 5th player to average 25 points, 7 rebounds, and 7 assists per game in a single season, which is an awesome stat. Uh, James also made the All-NBA second team, but again, the Cavs didn't make it to the playoffs that year because they just weren't good enough, even with LeBron averaging those numbers. Uh, unfortunately, this one's going to be a little bit skewed because Jordan missed 64 games with that broken foot. But I think the second season has to go LeBron just because he averaged all those points and with the seven rebounds and seven assists, that's just a great single season. All right, so we're tied 1-1, and we're going on to Season 3. So in Season 3, Jordan would become the league's best scorer. He averaged 37.1 points per game on 48.2% shooting, and with that, he won his first scoring title. It's still the fifth highest scoring average in NBA history, and the four other ones ahead of him were all named Will Chamberlain. He became the second player to score at least 3,000 points in a season. He also averaged five rebounds, about five assists, three steals, and one and a half blocks per game, and made the All-NBA first team. He became the first player to record 200 steals and 100 blocks in a season. In the playoffs, his team got swept by the great Boston Celtics for the second straight season, but he still managed to average 36 points, seven rebounds, and six assists per game. Now on to LeBron. So James would build on his great second season with even a better third season. He averaged 31.4 points, 7 rebounds, 6.5 assists, 2 steals, and about a half a block per game while shooting 48% from the field. He became the youngest player to average at least 30 points per game in a season and one of three players to average at least 31 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists per game in a season. Finally this year, his team made the playoffs, and he recorded a triple-double in his playoff debut when he scored 32 points, grabbed 11 rebounds, and dished out 11 assists. He played in 13 games in that postseason and averaged about 31 points, 
eight rebounds, and six assists per game while shooting almost 48% from the field. That year, James also made the All-NBA First team. While Jordan was the league's best scorer and one of the best scorers in NBA history, you have to give that to LeBron because of his postseason run and uh, almost averaging a triple-double taking his team through the postseason is a pretty unbelievable feat. So year three goes to LeBron. All right, so now on to year four with MJ being down 1-2 to LeBron. So in MJ's fourth season, he became the league's best player and well on his way to becoming the greatest of all time. He had one of the greatest seasons in NBA history. He averaged 35 points, 5.5 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals, and 1.5 blocks per game. For the second straight season, he would record at least 200 steals and 100 blocks in a season, making him the only player to ever achieve this in multiple seasons. He became the first player to lead the league in scoring and steals in the same season. He would also have a great shooting season when he shot about 53.5% from the field, which is the highest shooting percentage for a scoring average of at least 35. Jordan won almost every award. He won slam dunk contests, the all-star MVP, defensive player of the year, and the regular season MVP. He was selected to the All-NBA and All-Defensive first teams. As of today, he is still the only player to ever win the scoring title and defensive player of the year in the same season. In 10 playoff games, Jordan averaged about 37 points, 7 rebounds, and almost 5 assists per game. Not too far behind was LeBron, and for the fourth straight season, James would have a great all-around year when he averaged about 27 points, 6.5 rebounds, 6 assists, 1.5 steals, and about .7 blocks per game. He would continue his good accuracy from the field with about a 48% shooting percentage, and he made the All-NBA second team. His team made the playoffs again, and in the playoffs, James averaged about 25 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists per game, but he only shot 41.6% from the field. He did have one of the greatest performances ever in Game 5 against the Pistons when he scored 48 points, including 25 straight and 29 of his team's last 30, which is insane. His team did make the finals, but he wasn't great in that series. He only averaged 22 points on a terrible 35.6 shooting percentage, and his team got swept. Um, still a great season making it to the finals for LeBron, but this one has to go to Jordan. That was his greatest season of all time, and maybe when he started his run to become the GOAT. So fourth year, definitely going to Jordan, tied 2-2. On to year five. So Jordan again would have one of the greatest all-around seasons in NBA history. He averaged 32.5 points per game on 53.8% shooting to go along with eight rebounds and eight assists per game. He also almost averaged three steals per game in that time. He's the second player to average at least 30 points, eight rebounds, and eight assists in a season. Jordan would record 15 triple-doubles in this season, including seven straight, which is the second longest streak in NBA history. Jordan also had a great postseason run as well. He played in 17 games and averaged 34.5 points, seven rebounds, and seven and a half assists per game. Losing the NBA Finals in his fourth season didn't stop James from having one of the greatest all-around seasons in NBA history in his fifth. He won the first scoring title when he averaged 30 points per game on 48% shooting. James would further dominate that stat sheet with 7.9 rebounds, about 7 assists, almost 2 steals, and about 1 block per game. He was selected to the All-NBA First Team and became the third player to average at least 30 points, 7 rebounds, and 7 assists in a season. His postseason run was also good, which included a 45-point performance in Game 7 against the Boston Celtics. Still have to go with Jordan on this year. Both had great all-around seasons, but Jordan's 32-8-8 eight eight season stats beats LeBron's, and Jordan was also just a little bit better in the playoffs. Again, advantage Jordan, 3-2. to two. So now moving on to Season 6, Jordan had another great all-around season. He averaged an amazing 33.6 points per game on about 53% shooting to go along with 7 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals, and 1 block per game. This season is also special because Jordan added another offensive weapon to his game, the 3-point shot. He shot about 38% from the 3-point line, which is a career high, and that's without the shortened line. He led the league in steals for the second time in his career and was again selected to the all-defensive first team. Jordan's sixth season was his most complete one because he could score, grab rebounds, make plays, defend, and shoot from anywhere on the court, now including threes. 
Jordan also had a great postseason run. In 16 games, he scored about 37 points, grabbed 7 rebounds, and had about 6.8 assists per game. So in year 6, for the first time in his career, James would finally win the league MVP, and he deserved it. He averaged 28.4 points, 7.5 rebounds, and 7.2 assists that year. James would also elevate his game in the playoffs as well. In 14 games, he averaged 35.5 points, 9.1 rebounds, and about 7.5 assists per game. He had the second highest player efficiency rating in NBA playoff history, and his performance against the Orlando Magic is one of the greatest performances ever. In that series, he averaged 38.5 points, 8.5 rebounds, and 8 assists per game. With all those stats and winning his first MVP, year six has to go to LeBron and tie this up 3-3. Three to three. Now on to year seven where Jordan had another great season. He shot 54% from the field, which is now the highest for a perimeter player averaging at least 30 points per game in NBA history. In the playoffs, this time it was a bit different because Jordan finally won the finals MVP. In the finals against Magic Johnson and the Los Angeles Lakers, Jordan averaged 31.2 points, 6.5 rebounds, 11.5 assists, 3 steals, and 1.5 blocks per game. That year, Jordan won the scoring title, league MVP, and finals MVP. Tough to beat that. But James would try, and it's all the same with James this season, so really no need in repeating. He had another great all-around season, but this time he shot over 50% from the field and averaged a career-best 8.5 assists per game, which is a record for forwards. All the points, rebounds, blocks, steals, and everything like that were really the same as other seasons, so this one's got to go to Jordan just because winning the scoring title, league MVP, and finals MVP just can't be beat. Year 7 goes to Jordan. So now with a 4-3 to three lead, let's see if MJ can close out LeBron in the 8th season. All stats aside, the only thing you need to know is that Jordan won the scoring title, league MVP, and finals MVP in the same season for the second straight year. Obviously, Jordan's stats and performances were again great, which included all-time records for most points in a single postseason, and he had six first-half three-pointers in Game 1 of the NBA Finals. Now on to LeBron, so no need to bore you with all the statistics because, again, he had a great regular season. But what hurt James in this season was that after having a really good series against the Chicago Bulls and against the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals, he failed to deliver in the Finals. Uh, Jordan won the Finals MVP, won the NBA Finals, so again, year eight's got to go to Jordan, and uh, that puts him up 5-3 to three in closing out LeBron. So although Jordan closed out LeBron in year 8, let's see if LBJ can save some face in year 9. So in season 9, Jordan actually didn't win the league MVP, but he led the league in scoring and steals. He won his third straight finals MVP with another dominant finals performance. In game 4 of the NBA Finals against the Phoenix Suns, Jordan scored 55 points, which is tied for the second most points in a finals game. That series, Jordan would go on to average 41 points per game, which is still the NBA record. He scored 40 or more points four times in that series. Jordan's finals average was 41 points per game on 51% field goal percentage, 8.5 rebounds, 6.3 assists, 1.7 steals, and 0.7 blocks per game. So now on to LeBron in his ninth season. So in his ninth year, James went on to win the league MVP and had another great regular season statistically. This time, however, he won the finals MVP and had one of the greatest postseason runs in NBA playoff history. In Game 4 against the Indiana Pacers, a must-win for the Heat, James scored 40 points, had 18 rebounds, and dished out 9 assists. Then in Game 6 against the Celtics, another must-win for the Heat, James scored 45, grabbed 15 rebounds, and dished out 5 assists. He became the first player since Wilt Chamberlain in 1964 with at least 45 points, 15 rebounds, and 5 assists in a playoff game. James also averaged 28.5 points, 9.5 rebounds, and 7.5 assists per game in the Heat's four clinching games, and he had a triple-double in the final title clinching game. James' finals averages 28.5 points per game, 10.2 rebounds, 7.5 assists, and 1.5 steals per game. Again, this was a close one, but had to give the slight edge to Jordan because he had those 41 points per game in the finals, and uh, that's just a clinching stat. So Jordan ended up winning this matchup 6-3 to three in the first nine seasons. 
So in conclusion, I have MJ taking the win uh, six to three over LeBron in the first nine seasons. Again, like I said, uh, the end of the careers were a little bit different. So I thought taking the first nine seasons would be a really good representation of their careers and to see who really is the greatest of all time. Again, this is a really fun debate to have. So uh, like and definitely comment. I would love to hear your thoughts, what you think about the debate, and even what you think on the end of their careers and how they ended and how that affected their um, overall greatness level. So um, again, smash that subscribe button have a lot of really fun videos coming out in the future and uh thanks for watching